Hi, welcome to my channel and welcome to a series of unfortunate events. Let me start. So back in May, as you know, uh, my motorcycle was set on fire. Um, then I had to fly to Singapore where I got stuck there for at least a week because I got COVID in a hotel and there was, I lost my flights and there was a lot of other stuff that uh, uh, forced me to stay uh, um, in Singapore. That's why I had uh, no way to um, post any video in uh, last uh, months. Uh, therefore, uh, and I'm going to, uh, because I need some holidays and I'm going to uh, do some uh, break uh, again in the next two weeks. Anyway, there was a bunch of stuff that uh, happened. Um, also with the stocks, there was a bunch of stuff happened. The stocks went down another 9% or at least it's what I've lost in terms of profitability. In the past, uh, you, with the war in Ukraine still maintaining, with the market still in a state of um, crap, basically, lost around 13% of my entire uh, portfolio, uh, although um, I didn't lose because I didn't sold, so, uh, and most of my portfolio is 75% of my portfolio is based on dividends so I'm still receiving those dividends because I didn't sell anything. The crypto went down quite a lot which I'm going to do analysis in, in a few minutes and the, the stock as well but what matters is continuing to invest and that's why I'm still continuing investing trying to uh, buy low of course uh, now the market went down but in a long period in within 10 years or five years I hope we're going to recover, or at least uh, that's what I'm aiming to, to recover the, the loss that we've done this year. Although, having consideration that the past year I've won around 17%, this year I'm losing 13-ish. So we're still in a, a positive uh, per se, but I'm aiming to um, be positive at the end of this year. Let's see how the things goes. Uh, this is my strategy at least and one of the things that i'm going to do is still looking to new stocks and this is uh, the new stocks that uh, i found this week so let's have a look so one of the stocks that uh, i've found this week and i do have on my portfolio at and i didn't sell because uh, there was a split with at and with the uh, w water brothers uh, corporation and uh, discovery and that's why I've tried to keep with it, although Wonder Brothers went down around 15%. And uh, and I thought, uh, should I sell uh, at and But at and is still in negative equity, so I'm going to stick with it. And I'm still re receiving dividends, although the dividends went around 4.9%, uh, uh, which, uh, comparing with uh, the Verison, uh, it's 5.4%. Uh, the Verison is much better. Um, in terms of um, uh, performance and in terms of dividend yield and at and Although uh, at and has a 5.04% uh, they pay quarterly January, April, July and December they are undervaluing 70.3% which comparing with at and it's much uh, higher in, uh, in terms of undervalued than actually at and so this it's better um, investment than at and um, X dividend dates uh, we have July of 27 so um, we still have uh, time bear in mind that we need at least 42 two days to in um, um, to buy the stock so they can process our order so you can receive the dividend in terms of the financial health we have a score of three of six meaning that they are failing in three areas one is the short and the long uh, term liabilities and also the debt level which is um, considerably high where in terms of assets we have around 35 billion and in terms of liabilities around 46 billion the market sentiment we still have a buy and in terms of the future growth we have a five percent and uh, having here in consideration the the, the past performance uh, minus 1.3 i don't see too much of a risk here i do think this is a good stock to have on your portfolio if you don't have any other technology like uh, t-mobile which could be one of quite interesting as well but uh i'm all aiming for uh, the biggest two which is the the verizon and the at t in my opinion the next ticker it's a bns the bank of nova scotia this is one of the stocks that i have under my high for 
if you for a long time uh, for a couple of months they have a dividend yield of 4.41 percent is a, a quite good target now to get in on this stock not only because they pay quarterly february march august november december and they are undervalued in 55 uh, percent the the ex dividend date is 4 of july so it's today we won't have time to buy this one but we're going to have time to um, for the next quarter, if you want, if you are aiming for the, for the, um, if you are aiming for the dividend, although have in consideration that the stock may increase, and as we can see here in a graph, we have a decrease of the beginning of the month, but then they are um, uh, increasing more towards at the end of the month, as you can see, this uh, increase line. In terms of the financial health, they are scored in terms of six under six, although. In terms of assets, you have around 446 billion, and in terms of liabilities, around 1.1 trillion. Uh, <laughs> basically, this is a company that manage um, debt, let's say, and uh, it's the the end game for Nova Scotia. They are a really big bank. Bear in mind that the GDP of Spain is 1.3 billion, and the liabilities of Nova Scotia it's 1. 1 billion so um it's quite big bank um if it fails uh, a lot of banks are going to fail as well and uh, probably go, you may see a collapse in the financial sector have this in consideration we still have a market sentiment of and hold uh, we have a future growth of 2.3 percent and in the past performance was a 2.1 percent so we have here some uh, information that validates this uh, future growth um, f uh, of a 2.3 percent although i don't think it's going to be 2.3 percent uh, due to the the market probably it's going to be around 1.5 percent or two percent although uh, this is uh, could be a good investment uh, it's one of the banks that pays quarterly which uh, there's not many banks um that pay quarterly and uh, i think this was added into it or not long ago uh, I know because I've been uh, looking for this uh, stock for a long time. It's my, in my opinion, it's better than uh, J.P. Morgan or uh, Goldman Sachs or any other uh, financial company that you are looking to invest. And the last but not least for this week, we have Bats uh, .l, uh, .l because it's a UK stock and a British stock. Usually, you don't pay tax, so that's why I recommend always the British stock, not the the anonymous in terms of the u.s stock which is going to be beat um, british american tobacco so the british american tobacco have a dividend yield of 6.16 percent uh, they pay quarterly in march july september and december uh, this was actually one of the stocks that i had on my portfolio for a while uh, they went up quite a lot in the past um uh, two weeks i think and i've sold um, the all my positions in American British tobacco because it's one of the uh, stocks that I wanted to get out. I don't see that tobacco is going to uh, be um, the future unless they've changed completely their portfolio. If they change completely their portfolio, probably I will acquire again. Anyway, uh, they are undervalued still in 68.6%. So the activity that is going to be on July 07 and the, the the financial health score we have a three of six square they also uh, failed on the short and long term uh, liabilities and also uh, the debt um, level where in terms of assets they have around 13 billion and in terms of uh, liabilities around 15 billion we have a strong market buy this is due to two factors one is the ex dividend that which is uh, quite high and um, they have here also a future growth of 3.5%, which is quite interesting. Although the past performance was minus 24.6%. Uh, this is due to uh, COVID. Um, and uh, since uh, we are seeing some he's or we see some he's uh, in the past a few months and uh, on the COVID restrictions, people start to go to pubs, go to um, um, clubs, and they start to consume more tobacco. Um, so that's why the, the, the projection for the next up, uh, upcoming quarter is going to be positive with around 7.5%. So now let's have a look into the markets uh, of what happened last week. The SP uh, 
the SP500 went down around 2% and we still have the Nasdaq with minus 4%. Bear in mind that Nasdaq can go uh, a higher than actually the SP500. The SP500 is more stable than actually the Nasdaq. Um, and uh, I, I'm losing a bit in terms of the TQQQ. Um, I didn't, I'm buying more uh, of TQQQ, which is referencing, uh, which is, which is doing reference into the Nasdaq. Uh, so I've, I'm losing a little bit there, uh, there but um, I'm expecting to just to increase uh, unless um, this goes down in the next upcoming month, like in September or November. There's going to be there's big speculation in terms of uh, of uh, of another crash because of the American families are starting to use their savings and there is a, a expectation that the those savings will end up around uh, November September um, and we could see another crash uh, over there. Until then, uh, I'm still buying TQQQ. Bear in mind my my gain. And my game, it's a long term, it's not a short term. Um, and so I, I'm not be, uh, afraid of another crash. If that happens, I'll put it more, uh, I'll invest a little bit more. And finally, we have an increase on the Chinese market uh, of 0.29%. They are starting to increase. Um, one of the stocks that I had was the ETF MSHI which started to increase, we, we had around minus 50%. Now they are around minus 20 something uh, as well. The um, Alibaba, it's around minus uh, uh, 20, but they reach, they rose around the 45% almost uh, in the past. The most affected this week was the semiconductors where actually Intel uh, had a, a big uh, cut there's a lot lack of uh, materials, uh, there's lack of uh, uh, processors, and therefore cars, and, and, and so on and so on. The, the semiconductors are being quite affected at this stage um, due to the lack of materials that allow you to produce semiconductors. So that's why the market went down quite a lot, and this is influenced basically from the restrictions in Russia and with the war with Ukraine. And during this week, we also see a positive trend on the energy sector uh, and also on utilities. So as I mentioned uh, on the heat map, we have here the utilities quite green. All of them are quite green. We have here NEE, which is one of the energy uh, providers, uh, which a big increase. We also have the energy sector ExxonMobil and Chevron and with a, a negative impact we have the technology sector with Microsoft, Google, Meta with uh, almost uh, 2% minus uh, average uh, we, where Apple also got affected and here the semiconductors where, which is Apple and uh, Nvidia and AVGO and Intel so my stocks uh, on semiconductors were quite affected I do have Intel AVGO but AVGO I still have positive uh, but this too uh, went down quite a lot, and but the most uh, more impacted was here actually the AMD and uh, Nvidia, and this is what, for one simple reason because uh, the market started to get flooded with the uh, graphic cards uh, due to uh, uh, the the Bitcoin went down quite a lot, and there are some miners that uh, rush to sell uh, all those graphic cards, and the market now it's flooded, which. Uh, forced the the price of the graphic cards around to da go down around 30 percent you know overall and that's why amd and nvidia which rely a lot on graphic cards where most of their business is relying on graphic cards they got quite affected and as you can see berkshire Hathaway still continue to be a good in, uh, investment so i do have some stocks here uh, we have here wells fargo with an increase of 3.21 percent we have here also Bank of America with a big increase, but those stocks actually don't pay much of uh, dividends. That's why I've mentioned Nova Scotia and I do have on my um, watch list. Okay, guys, now let's have a look into the SP500 and the Bitcoin and see what's going to happen this week. Okay, so as you can see, I have uh, draw here two lines. One is the, the support and the other one is the resistance. 
we are now facing uh, again a new increase but i don't think this is going to be for too long uh, we have uh, going to have an increase um, probably the next uh, monday or so but this is going to be for um, uh, probably monday tuesday is going to be positive but then we're going to see again a new drop uh, similar to what we see here uh, we may reach this point again more towards the end of the, the month, but uh, we're going to do some something like this for the next upcoming week. So uh, money probably is going to be positive, but then uh, more towards the end of the, 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 the week, it's going to be negative and probably at the end of the, the month, we'll reach again the, um, the support around the 3,500 euros, uh, dollars, I mean. Um, if we follow this uh, trend line as the support. Although remember that on the last crash, we went around the 200s. So this is still, it's still bad, but we're probably going to reach again at this point. Uh, now, I don't trust on this. We're not consolidating here. Uh, this is not any kind of consolidation. This could be a trap. Um, and we may fall again for the next resistance around the 3500 so if you want to invest on the downtrends i do recommend you to for example on the um, nasdaq um, if you are focused on the nasdaq i do recommend you to invest on the sqqq it's a short on the nasdaq probably seeing this scenario i probably going to invest some on the SQQ in the next upcoming weeks and then sell um, as soon uh, I start to see uh, an uptrend on the market. In terms of the Bitcoin, I do see the same trend as the SP500. We're going to reach again the $15,000, uh, probably, uh, although I do see here a new uh, resistance around the $70,000, uh, which, was, which was what we had here in the past. Um, but since the market is still uh, with the downtrend, we see here exactly the same behavior of the SP500 on the MACD. So I do believe this is not, it's too close. This is too close. So I do see here that we're going to face another downtrend and probably going to reach again for the 15,000. So get ready for that. This is not enough of consolidation. We, we, we tried to see here some consolidation, but didn't went through. Um, it went down again so uh, until we start to see another consolidation um, we need to be aware that this may go down and down around again to the 15,000 so uh, I do recommend you to uh, save some money and um, for for that downtrend again okay guys I hope you enjoy this week tips don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the like that will help me a lot and now after all these uh, unfortunate events, I think we may be in a good track to do some profit for this week or at least until, uh, until the end of the, the year. Uh, let's hope that all the gods are with us and see what's going to happen. Although if uh, you are a short term investor, uh, I don't have good news for you. You may lose some money now, but if you are a long term investor, I think you'll be uh, good enough. For the next upcoming five years bear in mind that so far this is in my case in my portfolio uh, i do uh, i did made some comparison with others and you see this in my tweets where uh, i've compared myself with the top five most copied uh, investors on eToro and they had all around an average of performance minus 30 percent minus 25 percent where mine is minus 15% now uh, minus 13% which I do think we may uh, recover that and probably won't lose any money this year um, in terms of performance because we it didn't sell uh, I didn't sell anything uh, my profitability is still 83.6% uh, I'm I'm going to reach the 90% until the end of the year that's what I'm I'm trying to aim for the 90% of profitability at least. Therefore, I think my uh, portfolio is quite stable comparing to others. We didn't lose much and finish uh, in a positive way. Once again, guys, thank you. Cheers and see you next week.